Good day, my peeps. What a go on, what a go on, what a go on. Well, hope everyone doing well. Bless upon yourself. So, I may say, well, guess what? I got to try to Muta Baroka once again. Now. Well, this is Muta Baroka. Muta Baroka. <laughs> Muta, yeah, man. Muta Baroka and Dr. Rai Egans. I am where I got to try to do right now. You see what I say? Yeah, man, but. Kinda of behind the scene for that one here, you know, but I'm gonna take it in, man. I them around the place right now. Right, Egans and Dr. Ray Egans and Brother Muta Baruka. Remember for like, share, and subscribe. So, I may say, <laughs> let's build a thing, one family. Yeah, man, bless up on yourself, big up on yourself. Guide and protection out there, walk safe, it's a jungle. White people are fucked up. <clears throat> yep, they sure are. <laughs> I mean, you know, my, my mother said to me, and I quote her, she, she said, Ray, the Bible says, yes, yes. if any man come unto you and bring up this doctrine of Jesus, mm -hmm. don't receive him into your house. Yes, yeah, man, you know, right, you know, and, and, and brother, I can't begin to describe to you the pain of my own mother. Yes. Not speaking to me for two years yes. because of a truth that I had come to find. Yes. And when I tried to share it with her, her attitude was, I don't want to see that. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so the question is now what I'm asking now is, at the point where it is right now, do you think that you have found the truth or you think it's a truth? I like the way you said that. Yeah. I like the way you said that. One of the things that I had to define is, I had to answer the question, what is truth? Yeah. Okay, and I think we all need to ask that question. And the definition that I have come up with to the answer, what is truth, is this. Truth is that which is consistent yes. with facts and reality. Yes. It cannot be changed because of other things happening before or after it. Exactly. This is a constant. Truth is immutable. Yes. Constant. And it, yes, it's constant, brother. Never change. It never changed. Not truth. Yes. Opinions change. Yes. Doctrines change. Traditions change. You see what I'm saying? Human scruples change. But the truth is that which is consistent with fact and reality. Yes. So uh, when I say that I found the truth, the truth that I came to grips with was the fact that I had been lied to. Yeah. Okay, now that's, that's the truth. The truth that I came to grips with was the fact that the story that was taught to us was stolen from us. Mm -hmm. The truth that I came to grips with was the fact that a, another people created a belief system to teach us knowing it would rob us of our power. Mm. The truth that I came to grips with is knowing that religion is completely incompatible for black people. Mm. We are a spiritual people. Yes. We don't live by religion, brother. We live by spirit. Okay. All right. So if maybe 10 years from now, I see Dr. Ray in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. There's a possibility that he might be preaching Islam or Buddhism based upon other information that might represent itself to evolve you from this stage now to a next stage, which is a truth. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Yeah, and in answer to your question, one of the phrases that I say when I'm talking to people is, at this point in my development, yeah. okay, because one of the things I've come to grips with, my brother, is I am developing, I'm still learning, okay, now, will I be preaching religion? I don't think I'm going to ever devolve. Mm. <laughs> Notice how I'm saying that, okay? Yeah, yeah. To the point where I'm going to preach religion because religion, I have found that religion is the deification of someone's culture. Mm -hmm. Okay? Uh, 
when you say Islam, that's the deification of an Arabic culture. Yeah. When you say Buddhism, that's the deification of an Oriental culture. Uh, Hinduism, that's the, you follow what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, create Christianity, it's the deification of a European culture. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so, and, and the deep thing about religion is religion is about making people think that this is what God said about something. Mm -hmm. That's what religion is. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and, and, and we have to actually get to the point if we're going to empower ourselves. And this is the this is why I'm so excited about being here for the Marcus Garvey celebration. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Because Marcus's message, even though he was dealing with us at a certain point in our growth and development, Marcus's message was, as you so well know, up you mighty people. You shall accomplish. You can accomplish what you will. Yeah. The reason why we're not accomplishing what we will is because our will has been snatched from us yeah, yeah. And, and, and has been supplemented with doctrine and indoctrination. And we even pray. Mm -hmm. We pray, Lord, not my will, but thine will. But thy will be done. Yeah, yeah. Okay? To even say not my will mm -hmm. means you have surrendered your will. Of course. Of course. You follow me? But that's what religion does to us, bro. Yeah. Even the the, as it is, how it, how it is written in the Bible about the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not, instead of not of I, in the in the Egyptian um, chemistic yes. understanding of it, it says you take personal responsibility for the things that you do. Yes. So you say not have I done this, not have I done that, and if you are found wanting by the mahat, yes, you will have to go back. And restart the whole thing until you get the thing right. Yes. Yes. So in the in the in the Christian thing, it say, "Thou shall not." Meaning, no, there is someone saying, which is you saying, "Thou shall not." Like just pointing to somebody else. Right. Thou shall not. Mm -hmm. Instead of I shall not. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And and see again, this is this whole concept is putting in our minds from childhood yes. the subliminal concept that this is what God said. Yes. Yes. Brother, who really had... Brother, man, listen, let me calm down. Who, who dares try to tell somebody what God said? Yes. We don't do that, man. Like you have a phone number for God's Yeah, you know. Yes. Yes. You know, the... What see what, the thing that, that's deep about African spirituality is each one of us can hear the voice of the Almighty mm -hmm. in us. Yes. We don't need somebody to tell us yes. what God said. Yes. Usually, when people say that, it's what somebody wants you to think that God said. Yes. That's what religion is all about. So therefore, it ends up becoming a control mechanism. And we're not free as a people. And until we become free as a people, we're not going to experience our power as a people. Mm -hmm. See, they knew that, man, when they gave us religion. They knew when they snatched us out of our motherland yeah. and forced religion on us that it would keep us from tapping into our own spirituality. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and so one of the analogies that I use, my brother, is the reason why a bird cannot fly is because it's in a cage. You don't have to teach a bird to fly. Mm -hmm. It's natural. Spirituality is natural for us. The reason why we're not experiencing our spiritual power is because we're in a cage yes. of, of people's standards or a cage of people's concepts. Of religious beliefs. Thank you, brother. We have a lot of religious beliefs that bind me to that cage. Thank you. This is the cutting edge, and I refer to talking to, I should say, doctor. Brother, 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 Ray. Brother, brother Ray is fine with me, man. I don't use the word reverend, and I don't, I didn't, and, and actually, I'm trying to move our people away from pastor because the word pastor means shepherd. Yes. And in order to be a shepherd, the people got to be sheep. Sheep, yes. And sheep are the dumbest animals on the planet. Yes. They don't think. Yes, yes. You see what I'm saying? So I'd rather just say Brother Ray or in Wally Moo, which means teacher. Okay, okay. All right, you're, you're going to present um, a, a, a lecture on Sunday. I know that, but 
We have four hours for this program, yeah, and I don't know how tired he is. Okay, man. <laughs> brother, I, it's an honor to be here, brother. Okay, man. I'll sleep after it's over, this brother. This is a marathon program, you know. This is a marathon program, man. <laughs> because I know that the listeners is so overwhelmed when they were told that he went to be live in the studio. It is like, wow, you know. I'm honored, brother. We are going to the studio with Muta Baroka. Well, can't miss that. Yeah. All right. So, so. But me could, me could ask, you know, the thing. You say you lose a lot of um, your, 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 your church membership. Now yes. you start uh, a different kind of yes. gathering now. Yes. Um, it reached 500 yet. Oh, man, we are way, way over there. I, I have 185,000 listeners to, to, just to Black Liberation Radio. Radio. For the radio? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, our headquarters is in St. Louis. We have an African village in Atlanta, an African village in Memphis, African village uh, in Baltimore. We are in Charlotte, North Carolina, Detroit, Michigan, Chicago, Illinois, uh, Youngstown, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, uh, and uh, Lakeland, Florida. Oh, we're growing, man. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. we're growing. And people, the, the people them of the old really of the old church. Have you seen any of them evolving to this? Yes. New idea, or the information that they have now received. Yes. They come to you and say, "Boy, brother, Ray, you want to say, I hear you change this thing, but now I realize that it was necessary to change." Yes. Yes. In fact, I have a lot of ministers. Yes. Uh, that have transitioned over and again my approach is different now what I do now my brother is I, I, I show people the facts and, as you, and again I always say don't take my word for what I'm saying go do your own research I'll give the facts and say now just go va go validate what I said yeah I, you see yeah, I, 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 that's something I do part of this program and, you know I tell something I say look at man information that they we're going to find out if it's true or lie, may I tell you. Know, yeah. yeah. Necessary and important that you be. You have only by you to follow you, or it's just old people like me follow you. Yeah. You have only by young people in the church, or just old people like me. Actually, yeah. most, actually, man, most of my followers now, and I don't like these word followers, yeah, 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 most yeah. of my students, most of the people who are part of our fellowship mm. are, are older than me. Okay. And, I, and I'm 60 years old. So you don't have no young people in your country. We do have, we do have some very. Oh yeah, we got a lot of them. We got a lot of young people, especially our group out of Baltimore. They're all young people under 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 35 years old. So all you do, you you, 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 you shift from one state to the next, like when, when you keep your your phone, your meetings. You mm -hmm. know, what you do? I I just on the way they reach everybody. That's exactly how we have grown. Uh, people listen to Black Liberation Radio, and and I get a phone call from someone saying, uh, "Doc, well, we would love for you to come and speak in our city." Mm. And uh, for example, we're getting ready to open open an African village in Dallas. I was asked to come to Dallas. Mm. I have a strong listener base in Dallas, mm. and uh, and then they want to start a, an African village fellowship. Okay. So that's how it's been growing. Okay. And the deep thing about this man is. I have not been trying to do this. Mm. I'm not trying to grow anything. Yes. You know, I told the Almighty and the ancestors, I just want to teach the truth. Yes. That's it. Yes. You know, and as a result of just teaching the truth, man, people are hearing it. Mm -hmm. And the deep thing about it, the brother said it to me this way. He said, Ray, truth is that which rings like a bell when you hear it. Yes. You know, and he said he heard and it, his eyes opened up and he, he, hey, man, and that's how it's happening. All right. What is the problem with the idea? Like, for instance, the, the, the Bible is the is the authority of most of us understanding of this God that we speak about, and this man named Jesus supposed to be the gateway to this God. What is the problem where people find comfort in? believe in this thing even though people like me and you are telling them say this thing uh, is a uh, ignorance is, is a is a is not bliss but people believe it and find a kind of comfort in it what is the danger of that because people live out their whole lives and comfortable with it and now we come down and tell them say you know, it, 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 it can't work that way, but it did not work for them three years. And actually, it has not worked. 
Mm-hmm. For them, all you have to do is look at us as a people. All right. Okay. Um, my brother, there's no group of people on this planet that is more committed, more loyal, more faithful mm-hmm. to the teachings of the Roman Catholic Church than black folk. Mm-hmm. And again, I, you know, uh, forgive me for kind of keep going back to this, brother, but the movie Sankofa, which I first saw you in. Yes. That scene where the Roman Catholic priest yes, it's, it's, yes. was 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 whipping uh what Lulu? Yes. You see what I'm saying? And making her bow and when he was walking Joe through the church, convincing him and, and bro- programming him, that's what has happened to all of us. That's why I love that movie so. Yes. Now what's deep about it is this. Show you how, how awesome the African mind, not just the African mind, the mind, period, but especially the African mind. By profession, I'm a psychologist. Uh, that's my profession as a doctor. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a cognitive psychologist, not clinical, but a cognitive psychologist. Explain what that is. A cognitive psychologist is the study of human behavior based on what people believe. Okay. Okay? And of course, church folk <laughs> pretty much pushed me into this discipline of study. There's a thing called an egregore. Now, most of our folk have no idea what an egregore is. It's spelled E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E. And, uh, and uh, as I say all the time to the listeners, don't take my word for what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. Write it down and look it up for yourself. It's E-G-R-E-G-O-R-E, an egregore. Brother Baruka, an egregore is what is called the manifestation of a person's thought processes. In other words, if a person believes a thing hard enough, their thought processes will produce what we as psychologists refer to as an egregore, which is a manifestation, whether it's an emotional manifestation, a physiological manifestation of what they think and believe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for many of our people, they experience an egregore and so, therefore, they think their belief is real. Yeah, yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So, once a person comes to grip with grips with the facts, see, there's a difference between a fact and faith. When you believe a thing, that means you don't know it. You don't have to believe I'm sitting at a microphone. You're looking at me sitting at a microphone. So, you know I'm sitting at a microphone. You follow me? When you don't know a thing, you have no recourse but to believe it. Mm. For most of us, Doc, it's about belief. Now, when you have been deracinated, meaning cut off, when you have been uh, lied to about who you are, when you have been told that you are a sinner, and you were taught that from childhood, when you've been convinced that there's nothing good in you, Then you begin to have such low self-esteem of yourself Mm -hmm. that you actually begin to reach for whatever concept is there that will help you to have a sense of hope. And this is what religion has done for us. And so, yes, a lot of our people believe, and as a result of believing that someone is going to make things better for them instead of them making it better for themselves. They put their trust in that. They put their hope in that. And they get joy about what's going to happen one day. Yeah. It's not happening right now. Yeah. Follow me? Just one day is going to be all right. Yeah. And, and because we don't have anything to lock on to as far as where we came from and who we are and what we are. Now, D, Doc, listen. The powers that be know who we are. And they know what we are. And they know what would happen if we ever return to an awareness of ourselves. So they must never. Uh, One person said it this way. When you have told so many lies over the centuries that to tell the truth about one of your earlier lies will cause you to lose all that you have accomplished, you must never ever tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. So those who lie to us must continue to lie to us. Unfortunately, I was one of those 
was lied to. Who was lied to and then trained to tell the lie. To tell the lie. And perpetuate the lie. That yes, sir. We can repeat the lie. Yes. yes. Man, I mean, I got my master's in religious education. I got a bachelor's in theology. I got a master's in sacred literature. Yes. And I hold two doctorates yes. in the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm very well trained in the lie. In the lie, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me think about it, man. <laughs> oh, brother. Hey, you know, my thing, man, is if I can reach just just a little bit yeah. of the people with the truth that I reach with the lie, I will breathe my last breath as a happy man. Yeah. You know, the lie is so deep that they have everybody believing that there is something other than what is going to happen or what not going to happen. In other words, a man tell you, said, Jesus going to come back to save the world. But you yourself will never see that day. And it never happened. But you believe that it's going to happen. You know, they say most Americans believe that they are going to live in the time of the rapture. Most well, Americans well, believe that. Well, now, here's the, here's the deep thing about that, my brother. If people would simply read the Bible. See, this is why I like to take people to the Bible. I like to take them to the very book that they believe in. The Bible actually tells us that the rapture is not going to happen. Mm. It tells people that. But those verses are not preached from pulpits. All right. We're going to give the time. We'll give the people. Since we're going to go to the Bible so much in the, in the four while we're going to give the people them a time to go for their Bible. Because I know you're going to refer to the Bible <laughs> in many, many ways. This is the cutting edge on RFM. It's the things you can't. Yes. Cutting edge. Uh, before we go to the break, you were start. We were talking. You said about the rapture. And <laughs> you, you say the, the Bible says there will be no rapture. That's correct. Okay, so you have to explain now why you say that. It's about our biblical. Now, now you, you, you know where we, the point that we're at right now is the point that I was at. When I tried to tell my members of the congregation yeah. that they had been taught wrong and everybody ran off and left, right? No, well, so, they're, they're used to this program that we did. Oh, okay, 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 because... They were going to call them friends to turn on the radio at home. They're not going to run. Okay, okay yeah. good, good, good. Well, the reason why I say that is because the Bible actually declares. Now, I'm only doing this because I realize the masses of our people are still stuck there. You follow me? So let's go to where they are. A, a good teacher is one who has the ability, like a, like a school teacher, who may have a master's in education. A good school teacher is one who has the ability with a master's in education to go to a second or third or fourth grade classroom every day and relate on that level to those children because the job of the teacher is to provide... White people are fucked up. Yep, sure are. Well, the reason why I say that is because the Bible actually declares. Now, I'm only doing this because I realize the masses of our people are still stuck there. Mm. You follow me? So let's go to where they are. A, a good teacher is one who has the ability, like a, like a school teacher, who may have a master's in education. A good school teacher is one who has the ability with a master's in education to go to a second or third or fourth grade classroom every day and relate on that level to those children because the job of the teacher is to provide the information necessary for the student to move to the next level. Okay, having said that, uh, for those who, who, who are listening and want to, you know, really see this, all you have to do is turn to Matthew, the 24th chapter uh, in the Bible. And, and it actually says, plain as day, and let me, let me, let me get it here, uh, Matthew 24, I had it, uh, where did I do with it? Uh, bear with me, man, I, I, I got all these pages up here. Uh, Matthew 20, here we go, okay. Let's look at Matthew, the 24th chapter. Now, instead of reading this whole thing and taking up all this time with a lot of Bible verses, the 24th chapter of Matthew is the chapter about the rapture. It is the rapture about when the Son of Man shall come back in the clouds, okay? And actually, it actually says in the, uh, let's see, the verse, um, 29th verse. 
Okay, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, it's already, he just previously said, for then shall be great tribulation, as was not known before, never known before. It says in the 29th verse, immediately after the tribulation of those days. Now, I'm, I'm just reading what, verse, what words are here. Many of us have taught, not taught, that the rapture is supposed to take place before the tribulation. Mm. But in this verse, 29th verse in the 24th chapter of Matthew, it says immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. 30th verse. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Now check out this, my brother. The 34th verse, to save some time, get right to the point. And this is the verse we never hear. 34th verse says, Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass until all these things be fulfilled. All right, so the generation is what you must talk in 2,000 years ago. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Well, a lot of people interpret like it's them, for them generation, when it was something that was said to a generation 2,000 years ago. Well, as the generation passed, that he was talking to. And yes, it was the people he was talking to at that time. Yeah, they're dead. Like, they're all dead. <laughs> yeah, they're dead. And then to really, to really you know, uh, uh, add to it, the, the ninth chapter of Luke, the first verse, he says it this way. He says, Verily I say unto you, there are some of you standing here listening to me right now. You shall not see dead. You know it, brother. You got it. You got it. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> well, you are, we have to know these things, you know, because when we see certain things, we have to really know exactly why we don't believe it. Because we know it, and we know say, it's a craziness. When we say, there is many here. He was talking to the people who were standing in front of him. Standing in front of him, bro. He said, there's many ears that shall not see death until the Son of Man appear. You got it. Those people dead long there might never appear. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. So how did we get to, I mean, fix it up so to make it look like say, he was talking to me? Because, the, and as we, one of the things that I teach as a psychologist, and that is this, the greatest and most dangerous Psychopathology is the belief in something simply because you want it to exist. Yes. Or you need it to exist. Yeah, it's like you cut off your foot to match the shoes. Yeah. That you cut off your foot that you can't fit in the shoes. Yeah. Yes. And that's where our that's where the masses of our people are. So my assignment, yes. you know, I, I understand that God allowed me. To become a master of sacred literature, yes. to become a, a, a have a master's in theology, I, I, my assignment is to be able to show my people how we were misled, how we were bamboozled, mm. how we were blindfolded. You see what I'm saying? And usher them back to my to remove the cage, Doc. Yes. To remove the cage because we can't fly. Yes. Not because we don't know how to fly. Yeah, but the kids. We can't fly because we're in a cage. Yes, yes. So my assignment, man, is to remove that cage mm -hmm. of religion, of, of European traditions, okay, that, is, that, has, that has disempowered us. Yeah. You know, you know the first time I met a bridge in Sidon, and we got through that same reasoning about there's many years that shall not see dead mm -hmm. the son of man appear. I said, but wait, but them people, they're dead and they never come back. That's right. It, 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 it's like a bulb just clicking on me. Okay. I said, but wait, how we get to really attack like the thing was talking to 2,000 years after that? It was talking to right. 2,000 years before now. And, 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 and everybody that's listening to us right now, if they read that, they see it. Yeah, of course they see it. Okay, I can't quote it word for word. <laughs> yeah, they, they 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 see it. You know, uh, the the thing is, I've shared this with pastors, yeah. and and I say, you know, not because I'm trying to hurt other pastors, yes. but brothers, if you really love God, like you say you love God, yeah. and if you're really serious about ministry and healing our people and setting our people free, then we must tell the truth. Yes. Okay? 
you, uh, Baruka, you'd be surprised how many pastors have said to me, man, I don't want to see that. Yes, yes, yes. They turn their head, man, I don't want to see that. Because if they see it, then their conscience mandates that they must do something about it. it of course. You know, I spoke, I, I spoke at the, 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 the theological college in Jamaica, invite me, and I was, I, I was speaking, and I was told that the information that I was presenting was what they learned at the theological college. Mm -hmm. So my question was that if we learn this thing at the theological college, why we don't go out there to minister to the people then? Who no go back to the old time things right. that who say why we don't talk about the things them now that you get in this theological college to make you get up there and the people them chat wake up out of the illusion. They must say, well, you know, Muta, you know, you know, we gone by the man in Java, good evening. In other words, it gone bad already. So then just going to continue to make the thing go bad. And I said, wow, that is deep, man. There's a there's an old phrase, man, we sing uh, that we say that God told Moses to go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Mm -hmm. The pharaohs of today, man, and, and to any pastors that's listening, brothers I, and sisters, I don't mean any disrespect. Please don't take it that way. I'm speaking from the, the deepest part of my heart. My passion is to see our people empowered to be healed, to be raised up uh, like the like our warrior uh, and elder, uh, the Honorable Marcus Messiah Garvey. Decry, decried to us, man. You know, we have to get up from where we are because we can accomplish what we will. Yes. We can do it. Yes. One of the, you know, so 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 pastors. I don't mean no harm, but the pastors are the pharaohs today. That's keeping our people enslaved. Mm -hmm. They're keeping enslaved intellectually. They're keeping them enslaved spiritually. See, here's the thing, man. And I had to come to grips with this as a pastor. And here it is. When those who depend upon you learn what you know, they don't need you no more. Mm. Yes. You see? And in order for many pastors to stay in business, and I got to call it like it is, man. Doc, listen, when I was preaching Christianity, I made big money, man. Mm. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I mean, man, it looks like you still have big money, though. <laughs> and, and anybody can pass the look test, man. <laughs> well, well, you know, and I tell people, I mean, I'm a doctor. I am a doctor. I'm, I'm a musician. I'm my own music company. So my money doesn't come from ministry. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but I, I do try to look good, man. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we got to set our people free, Muta. Yeah, we yeah. got to set our people free, you know. Right. Stick up in. I want to go back to something where you say, because I, I, I realize that this is also a residue from the old European idea. When you said that the pastors are the fears of today, you insinuating that means that you are buying into the idea that there was a group of people named the Israelites, who was enslaved by a group of people named the Pharaohs, which I personally would not give credence to that, because then now it demonized Pharaohs to make we start to believe that the Pharaohs were some evil people. Um, I'm glad you said that. Putting some slaves uh, in, in, in things. So we keep saying the Pharaohs, like the Syrians, are some wicked people. It's like... You know, not understand. I got you. Yeah, I yeah, got you. Yeah. I got you. And I thank you for that because nothing could be farther from the truth. Yeah, yeah. you follow me. I, I was saying that in the context of of the enslaver. Yeah, and we were taught. Yeah, you notice how I'm saying that we were taught. Yeah. that the pharaohs were enslavers. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, you see, as I began to do my field research in Egypt, yeah. and I've been going, man, for the last 12, 13 years, mm -hmm. okay, doing field research, I found out, brother, and this is another thing that's devastating me, I found out, and I've been going, man, for the last 12, 13 years, mm -hmm. okay, doing field research, I found out, brother, and this is another thing that's devastating me, I found out that there was never an exodus. There was no Israel. Israel there was no Israel. There were people in... You know, I just found out the other day, which is serious, I just found out the other day in research that there was no Nazareth before the New Testament. There was no Nazareth. There was That's no right. city or town in, 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 in where they call Israel. There was no place. Nazareth is a construct 
to place a man named Jesus in a situation there you go. to fulfill something that was said yes. in the the Jew the, the, the in, in the Jew Jewish Bible. Yes. You know but yes. practically they would know Nazareth. There, actually, brother, to be honest with you, there was no Old Testament period. Yeah, there were there no Old Testament, but them say you know, I mean, it's so, so, it's so, call it Old Testament. Uh, it's but see, the, 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 the thing is, uh, what a lot of people don't know is that the Old Testament is newer than the New Testament. Yes, yes. You follow me? Yes. Okay. What we're dealing with here, okay, and this is this is historically historical fact. Anybody listening to me, please uh, do the research on the word Kazar. And if you have something to write with, that's spelled K-H-A-Z-A-R-S, Kazars, and Ashkenazim, Ashkenaz, A-S-H-E-K-E-N-A-Z, Ashkenazim, or with an I-M on the Amini plural. The Kazars are the so-called Russian Jews. Yes. The Ashkenazim are the so-called uh, German Jews yes. that and uh, both groups of these people came down out of what is called the Caucasus Mountains. Yes. You see what I'm saying? So what happened is when these people migrated south, they they saw the Christian Church. They didn't want to come under the rule of the of the of the Pope. They kept going further. They did and saw Islam. They didn't want to come under the rule of of the Sheikh. So they kept going further and they invaded and went into Africa. We call them the Hyksos. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And they came in and saw the spirituality of the Northeast African Nile Valley people. Yeah, and came in. Yes. yes, and what they did is they copied our story and then wrote themselves into it, yes. thereby creating or making an Old Testament story that starts with a guy named Adam. Yes, and then what they did also was to, when they came out of Kemet, years down the line, when England become powerful, the British gave them Teach. a piece of land Teach. that they now call Israel. Israel. Thank you, but they occupied and maintained that Egyptian idea. Yep. And say that they were the ones who were enslaved. You got it, man. Egypt. Yes. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> most of them is Russians. It's most of them. Is yes, Russian. Russian and German Jews, man. I was speaking to an Israeli woman a um, couple of weeks ago in a Connecticut, and I said, "Oh, with and I said, "So you're an Israelite?" And she said, "No, I'm an Israeli," but she gives credence to the Jewish tradition, and uh -huh. she said that I am a Jew, but my parents came from Russia. I said, but when I went to Israel, most of the people there that say that they are Israeli, uh -huh. where did them come from? Yes. How did so much Russians get into Israel to know, occupy the spot and call themselves Jews? Which is that story. This is where the story originated. From. Yes. Exodus. Yes. Who went into Egypt. Yes. And wiped out a lot of things and then claim that culture, move out of Egypt. Find himself back in the in the in the in the in Russia you got it. and in Germany. You got it. And then later on the British come and go bam, this is piece of land. These are the people, the chosen people of, of, of God. It's crazy. And to show you how deep this thing goes, brother, they see I, I, another phrase that I teach is this he who controls the printed page controls the thinking yes. of the age. Yes. In other words, if I want to control you. If I can write it in a book and convince you that what I wrote is the word of God, yes. I got you, man. Yeah. You see? So what we must understand is before the sixth, late sixth, late sixth, early seventh century, there was nobody on this planet that went under the identity of a Jew or Hebrew. Yes. Yes. See what I'm saying? Now, what's really deep about it is the Bible actually says in Galatians, the fourth chapter, that Abraham never existed. Yeah. It actually says it. It says that Abraham is an allegory. And for those who are listening, look at your Bible. Galatians, the fourth chapter, read verses 22, 23, 24. It actually says that Abraham, uh, his wives, Hagar and, and, and Sarah, yeah. his sons, uh, Ishmael and Isaac, it's an allegory. Yeah. The whole thing is an allegory. Yeah. It's a story. Yeah. Okay, now, here's the problem that we face as a people. When you have been so removed from the identity of who you are, or an awareness of your own identity, that you have to look into the literature of your oppressor to find a name for yourself, 
That's when you're in trouble, bro. Yeah. And that's called an epitome. An epitome is when you name an epitome is to name yourself after someone who never historically existed. Yes, yes, yes. You follow me? So when a person says uh, Israel, yes. they're talking about Jacob. Yes. Because God, Jacob wrestled with the devil, supposedly, yeah, right? God, and yeah. God changed his name from, from Jacob to Israel. One was a uh, victorious. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. You know? But there was no Jacob. Yeah. And there was no Jacob because there was no Isaac. Yeah. And there was no Isaac because there was no Abraham. Yeah. You see? Story coming it's all a story, man. It never historically happened. So when our people come to grips with the with this reality, you know, and, and it's a painful thought, please, don't, please, don't, those of you listening, it's, understand, this is a very painful process, man. When your I, brother, I, would, I, I had reached the point of suicide, Mota, I, I, you know, because my mother stopped talking to me, the girl I was engaged to took the ring off and threw it at me because she said I was satanic. My friends, I had an open door policy to preach from coast to coast, border to border, as a national evangelist. Everybody I knew shut me down because I found out something that they didn't know. Mm. Brother, it was so painful, man. It was, you know, I reached a point of not wanting to live anymore. You see? So I am so thankful today to the Almighty and the ancestors for holding on to me. Because I had got so so low at one point, brother. I said, you know, it would just be better if I ain't here. Because my constitution will not allow me to deny what I have come to find to be the truth. Yes, definitely. Definitely. You know? I, I am really into that, though. That I am not going to make it. Because you said that and you said that. And I come realize this now. Yeah. You're going to say, boy, I can't. I can't. Even sometimes you have to question your thing that you call truth. That's true. That's right. You have to question it. That's right. Am I really on the right path for this thing, considering that I have been saying these things for so many years, and also that my I have been taught this thing for so many years? Yeah. Yeah. And it is in my DNA for so many years. How the hell did I come around to know, come recognize this as the truth? Right. You know, it's, it, it, it's weird. And that's that again. That's why I encourage people to say at this point in my development. Yes, yes. Okay, because once you think that you have learned it, yes. that's when you realize you haven't, bro. Yeah, if you say you find God, you have to have you not problem. Yeah. God never lies. So yeah. That, yeah. That, that, that exactly, brother. All right. All right. We could come back to this this because you see, we might have given some information and all that it's so crazy all day. So we have to really because we know we know the listeners there, we know who are listening to it. We have to take it like Breast milk. Yes. Feed them slow. Yes. Nipple back Yes. All right now. We could go back to the idea of what we call Old Testament and New Testament. Mm -hmm. And where you just said that the Old Testament is not as old as we would think. Right. In other words, it, it wasn't written before... The um, before Mark, b before Mark, yes, right. it, 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 Mark was the first book of the New Testament. All right, most people would tell you, and most scholars would tell you that, um, most of the, the Old Testament was written like 500 years BC, okay, uh, even a thousand years. I'm going to give it all a thousand years BC, uh huh, to show you that it is manuscripts very old. Now, you are saying that Mark, which we don't even know near Mark, but it we could come up to Mark then. We know that Paul was written before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, according to scholars. I don't know if you agree with that. That, that, that Paul, the, the, the letters of Paul, was written before Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You give credence to that? Actually, Mark was the first New Testament book, written, chronologically speaking. Yes. Was the first New Testament. Now, now, actually, follow how deep this goes. We are still talking about something that didn't happen. Yes, but in, in terms of the in light of the information that if our, but yes, but yes. It, it is understood, mm. okay, in the realm of theology. Yes, in the realm of theology or, or, or bibliology, yes. that Mark was the first, first book gospel, written. Yes, a first gospel. Yes, and then Matthew and Luke. Yes. Okay, and that's why they're called synoptic gospels because they say the same thing. Mm. It's synonymous. Yeah. The gospel according to John, or what we call the Yoannine writings, John, um, first, second, and third John, and the Revelation. Yeah. Those five books 
are what is known as interpolations mm -hmm. in, in theology, meaning they were added into the biblical text centuries later yes. to make to, to twist the concepts around to make you think something happened that did not happen. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and so it has to do, of course, with the divinity. Yes. Of Jesus. Jesus Christ. All right, so where would you put Paul in all of this? Ah, uh, because I was, I was, at, apart from Mark, from Mark, I was, in my research, I, I found that, according to what they're saying, that Paul was written before Matthew, John, and, and which other one is? Luke. Luke? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they say that Paul was there. The, the Galatians um, was the first book. That was written by Paul, I think. I mean, that's, the, I, that's the first I'm hearing of that. Yeah, and so, then what, what happened now? We're talking about a next book, our books, mm -hmm. that make up what we call now the, the, Pente, the, the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch? Yeah. And you are now saying that all of that book, from Genesis to Malachi, was written in the same period as Mark. That's what you're saying, right? No, I'm saying it was written later. It was after Mark. Yes. All right. So explain, explain to me all that information. Okay. Be and the reason for that again has to do with my, the historical fact that the, there were the Khazars and the Ashkenazim. Yeah. They didn't come on the scene yeah. until the late sixth, early seventh century A.D. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the whole Old Testament is a story about them. Yeah. That they want the world to understand. Now, one of the very one of the important things we must understand, let's look at a timeline here. Okay, in the in the fourth century, they had the Nicene Council. Yeah. Okay, the Nicene the council that created Jesus. Yeah. Okay. And then you had after that three other made other major councils, the Council of Ephesus, Council of Chalcedon, Council of Chals uh, Constantinople, and 451 AD. Now, the, four, the one in 451 AD was the most damaging one of all because the Roman Catholic bishops passed a law in that council saying that no one is allowed to write down, produce, or even think or teach anything other than what we have decided as doctrine. Mm. That was in 451 AD. Now, the program still wasn't catching on properly, okay? Now, grab how deep this goes. So what happened? In 500 AD, and this is so important to this whole concept here that we understand. In 500 AD, York thrust the world into what they called the Dark Ages. 500 AD. For 1,000 years, from 500 AD to 1500 AD was the period that they called the Dark Ages, or they called it uh, medieval, okay? Um, you know, I call it a 1,000 year period of su the suppression of information. Mm -hmm. You gotta keep in mind, they went into Africa, they destroyed the libraries of Alexandria, they, they, they passed laws that if anyone was found with any of the writings of, of Africa, they would be put to death. So here we have a 1,000 year period of fabricating a new story or stories. Around 15, I'm sorry, 1456 around there, this guy who's a Jew, supposedly, named Johann Gutenberg. Now this is not religion what we're talking. Yeah. This is fact. Johann Gutenberg invent something called the printing press. And the first book he prints is a Bible called the Gutenberg Bible. That's the first Bible printed. What we must understand is this. Don't think for one minute that the powers that be was going to let this dude, Gutenberg, print the truth after they spent 1,000 years creating a lie. So what we must consider is, again, that's why I said he who controls the printed page controls the thinking of the age. We're looking for literature 
to tell us what happened in history. But if the authors of literature documented their European historiography, then we got it all wrong. So from 500 AD to, one, to, to 1500 AD, they spent 1,000 years creating a lie. And, and that's where we're basing everything. Everything we talk about now is coming out of that 1,000 year period. All right, let me just stick up here now. Um, the, the, the Gospels, yes. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right. is quoting what we now call the Old Testament to validate what was happening in their time. No. Now, when you say quoting the Old Testament, what do you for mean? instance, they say um, a child shall be born and it shall be called um, Emmanuel. Emmanuel. All right. So he's, right. he's taking something out of a book named Isaiah. Actually, it didn't. What is what? <laughs> no, we. Um, I'm talking about the Bible that we have now. You know. You're talking about Matthew. Yeah, yeah. Where it says that's the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. Yeah, that's what I say now. So he's, he's quoting something that is supposed to be in Isaiah. Right? Well, I'm not, we're not, not arguing with true or false. I'm just saying what he's doing. Th and that's what we've been taught. Yeah. Yes, that's what we've been so taught. In, when you read Matthew, right. he's quoting something that is in the Old Testament. Right. Isaiah. Right. All right. If Matthew was quoting something in Isaiah. Who is it that is writing the story <laughs> in Isaiah that a man can come in his time? Because according to what you say now, that it, these things was written long before, long after Matthew said it. So we are saying, what you're saying is that Matthew is quoting something that was not written that's what you're saying, that Matthew was quoting something that was not written because... That is correct. It was written after Matthew. That's correct. So how did Matthew get to quote something that was not written until after him? See, this is the fabrication. Yeah, and this, this, no, this, explain that to This me. is what I'm saying. See, a lie is always told in reverse. Mm. You grab what I'm saying? Yeah, so you're saying that it was written before Matthew said it and then Matthew quoted just to... Well, well yeah. see, actually, actually, Matthew did not quote Isaiah. That's, that's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. And if you, uh, anyone who will read Isaiah, mm -hmm. okay, now let me show you what I'm talking about. Let's, let's, let's examine that. Let's go to Isaiah, the seventh chapter, okay, where that is. Okay, and, and check this out now. Let's, let's go there, mm -hmm. okay, and, and, and examine this very carefully and you see what I mean. Isaiah, the seventh chapter, the 14th verse, that's where this comes from. Therefore, the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Mm -hmm. Behold, a virgin shall conceive mm -hmm. and bear a son, and thou shalt call his name Emmanuel. Mm -hmm. What the church has done in theology and in indoctrination is they have misapplied this and made it a prophecy of Jesus' birth. And then they took Matthew, the statement in Matthew, and connected the two. So where did that quote come from? The quote of... The Isaiah? It came from Isaiah. The quote. Well, well, Isaiah never existed. No, 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 no. We're not talking about whether he existed or not. Okay. It is quoted in Matthew. Right. All right. Where did that quote come from? The author of the book. The author of which book? Matthew. Matthew. All right. But if you look in Isaiah, right, you see Emmanuel in Isaiah. But it doesn't say Emmanuel in Matthew. What it says in Matthew? Jesus. It shall be called Emmanuel. It says, and thou shalt bear a son and shall call his name Jesus. Not Emmanuel, you sure? Because he was he, according to it to fulfill the now, now that's what I'm saying. See, they're, fulfill the prophecy. they're saying that this was a fulfillment of prophecy. Yeah. So then why didn't they call it why didn't they call him Emmanuel? Alright, so the prophecy that it was supposed to be fulfilling. Right. Where did they get that this prophecy was supposed to be fulfilled out of Isaiah? That's called in theology segmented biblical attention. 
That means what? That means when you take certain verses out of the Bible yeah. and chain link them together mm. to come up with a doctrine. So which one was written first? The, the court in the, 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 the part of Isaiah that he's referring to or the quote that Matthew is alluding to in, 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 in Matthew? Which one of them was written first? The New Testament was written before the Old Testament. Yeah. Fact. Yeah, so I'm asking you now. You follow me? All right, so if the, if, the, if the New Testament was written before the Old Testament, right? We have to ask so so how could he quote something that was not written? That's what I'm asking. Right. right. He didn't quote. That's what I'm trying to get you to understand. It's not a quote. So where did it come from that says, as it was said in Isaiah, when Isaiah now, not now this is what happens when the Roman Catholic Church interpolates. Mm. This is what I mean by the, re the the interpolation. To interpolate means to change things around so that you can come up with an idea that does not did not exist before. That's what an interpolation is. Mm. So you are, so you are say all right. You see, well, I get it clear enough. I got you. All right. You are saying that what the church did, or what the writer who's writing this thing, bro, is write down something that's, as it, it is said, in Isaiah, which was not said in Isaiah, because I've never used the word Jesus, but in the, in the Matthew, it, say, it refers to Isaiah. In Matthew, it, yes, it refers to Isaiah. Well, we, that, we, we were taught that. Yeah, but it's it, it is. It, but how can you refer to something? I understand what you're saying. Not written really, <laughs> unless there is someone who wrote it already, and then write Matthew, and then say, "Invite them put that inside." I mean. I got you. Yeah. See, again, this is what happens in the Roman Catholic Council church meetings. Mm. You follow me? These are. This is why they kept having so many council meetings. Mm. Okay, to deal with these monkey riches mm. and their agenda. All right, stick up in, stick up in. We can go to a simple one now. Now, now wait, wait, before you do that, let's, let's let's read Isaiah for a moment, so you can see what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Now it says the Lord. Where shall himself shall give you a sign. Mm. Behold, shall conceive and bear a son. Now this is why it's important to understand the etymological words used here. Yeah. The word virgin in this verse, see the two words for virgin in the Hebrew. Yeah. The first is Alma, A-L-M-A, which simply means a young maiden. Yeah. The other word is Bethula. Which means a woman who's never been touched by a man. Mm. So you have two words for the one English word virgin. In yes. Isaiah 7.14, the word virgin is Alma, not Bethula. Mm. Okay? So that right there sh strikes this whole concept of we're talking about a virgin birth here. Yes. Okay? And it says, and shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now, isn't it something that we only hear that one verse? It's the next two verses that shut the whole thing down. Mm. For the 15th verse says, butter and honey shall he eat. Jesus didn't eat butter and honey. Okay? And it goes on to say that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. Now the 16th verse says this, for before the child shall know to refuse the evil and choose the good, before this child is even old enough to know the difference between right and wrong, the land that thou abhorrest shall be forsaken of both her kings. We're not taught those verses. Mm. We're only taught the 14th verse. So what that means is, well, who is this talking about here now? Mm -hmm. Okay? So then we have to start asking ourselves the question, who is you in the verse? When it says, the Lord shall give you a sign. Like we said earlier, yeah. we like think that not. means us. Who's reading it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have to go up to the to the tenth verse, and it says, "Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, so saying, you is Ahaz.' Yes, yeah. the you in Isaiah seven fourteen is Ahaz, yeah. who was getting ready to go into battle, yeah. and he was freaking out, man, because he thought he was going to get killed in battle. That's straightforward. Okay, That's so Isaiah said to him. Calm down, dude. You ain't going to die. 
Ask God to show you a sign. Right. Yes. Yes. And Ahaz said, I'm not going to ask God for no sign. And Isaiah said, they has, listen, God going to give you a sign anyway, Ahaz. A, a, a young woman shall, a, a shall give, a, give birth to a child. Yes. And before this child is old enough to know the difference between right and wrong, Ahaz, you will have defeated both your enemies. Yes. That's straightforward. That's, that's it. Yeah, that's straightforward. You follow me? Now, for the sake of creating a doctrine, you follow me? Yes. Those who compile biblical literature yes. want to connect this verse to their fabrication in Matthew. Yes. As a part of the, and this again, this is called uh, a segment of biblical attention. Now, you really have to ask, who's the author? See, until we know who the author of these things are, yeah. We can't even really talk about it. So right. the truth of the matter is, Ahaz didn't write this. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, Isaiah didn't write didn't it. Didn't write it. Yeah, we know that. Right. We'll, 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 we'll go back to you because if, if I follow what you're saying, it means that what we just quoted a while ago was not written when Macho was talking, when Macho was saying what he was saying. Right? Yeah, it was not written. So my, my, now, 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 follow now. It was supposed to have taken place 750 years before Matthew. Yes, but you said that it was not written before Matthew. Correct. Yes. So how did Matthew get the information to write it about something that never happened? This is what I... Never happened before in writing. I got you. See, this is what I mean when I say the Gutenberg Bible. Mm. This is so important for us to understand. These people took 1,000 years Good. to create a timeline that's a lie. You follow me? Yeah. They wrote themselves back into history. For 1,000 years, they created this whole story here. Mm. And the publication came out with the Gutenberg Bible. Mm -hmm. it's, like write, it's like writing a... a, a what do you call it? A book. All right. And, 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 and you create a timeline mm -hmm. that's not true. All right. In, 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 other, in, in, in other, the gospel, mm -hmm. Jesus said, so who do they say I am? Yes. Some say he's that, some say he's that, and so Yes. And then him say, um, before Abraham, was mm -hmm. I am. Mm -hmm. And them say, but you're not even 50 yet. <laughs> right? And you say you know Abraham. And say, yeah, before Abraham was I am. Uh huh. All right. According to what you say, Abraham was written after this event that was supposed to have been taken place. Based upon what you say, for, 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 who, who, who said that? In, in which book it was said before Abraham was I am? In Matthew, in Matthew or Mark. Yeah, it, 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 Jesus. So, yeah, yeah it, it would have to be one of the synopsis of the gospel. Matthew, yes. all right. Get above what you say. Matthew is saying, before Abraham was I am. But uh -huh. he had nothing to, to, to relate to in terms of Abraham, because Abraham was not written yet. Okay. Yeah, so if Abraham was not written yet. And I didn't say it wasn't now, but okay, but go ahead. No, 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 but more I, more I say what I say, because we're talking about the Old Testament versus the New Testament. I just said the New Testament was written before the Old Testament. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm saying now, if Matthew is putting some words in a person's mouth that say, before Abraham was I am, alluding to something that took place before this man born. How is it that how we come to grips with him saying that when it was not written yet? Okay, let's look at it this way. Mm. Have you seen the movie The Matrix? Yes. How many sections of The Matrix were there? How many versions? Or how many episodes? We know, um, I think what, three or four? Three or four, yeah. Three okay, four, yeah. all right. Written by one person, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you think when this person wrote The Matrix, mm. That she already had the whole story in her head? No. No, I don't think so. Yeah, of course she did. 
She had the whole story in her head? Yeah. Okay. Explain, explain why you think that. Because true authorship, especially in, in, in uh, novels, mm -hmm. especially in writing novels, you write in reverse. So? Yeah. You already see the end of the story so in your mind. You write the, the last one before you write the first one. Well, it's not that it necessarily write it before, mm -hmm. but it's in her head that way. Yeah. yeah. You follow oh, what I'm saying? So, so the first one will be alluding to the last one. Yes. That's that's what story writing is all about. Right. You can't it away. It's, it's like um, what what you call it? The, the, the one where the woman, English woman, right? Um, the, and she get million, she get turned billionaire and fight. The, the little youth. Oh gosh, my red name again. This the story. This a story about this little youth in you know, some magical. Oh, 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 Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and for sure. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, 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 what is this? Uh, a, uh, a Resident Evil. Yeah. Whenever you have sequels. Yeah. The author has all yeah. that in their yeah. head. Yeah, yeah. You see, and so they, and they, they use the. Yeah, yeah, that is true. We call either, uh, yeah, yeah. So what, what, what? I, I can't see the logic tonight. You know? I can't see the logic tonight. But as I said, because I am trying to evaluate it in a mic. I got you. Yeah. I have to really absorb it to a level. Maybe, maybe tomorrow we think about it. I got you. But I can't see where you come from. I can't see where you. Yeah. Come see, from. so what you're talking about here is a, is a mindset yeah. that, that that created a lie. Yeah. And this lie is now considered to be history. Yeah, yeah. They wrote, they wrote the whole agenda. And as a result of what they wrote, look what's going on in the so-called Middle East. Mm -hmm. You yeah. got people fighting each other, man. Because of that. Over two people that never even existed. This is the cutting edge on area frame. With the idea, I'm talking to Dr. Ray here, you know, and I, I sit on, me and the advertisement never go on, right? I, I, bet I, I go over where and say, all right, I want, I want, I want to repeat. Because if I repeat it to my own self, I know people don't want to listen. I got you. All right. A group of people sitting down and writing a story. Mm -hmm. But they're writing the story in episodes. Yes. Right? Yes. So in writing the story in the episode, now they start at episode one. Mm -hmm. But in writing episode one, them allude to episode three and episode four. So they mm -hmm. put something in episode one alluding to episode three. Right. So when you reach episode three, it valid it, you can say, well, oh, and they said it's in episode one, you know. Uh -huh. See it and now fulfill it in episode three. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's deep, man. Yeah. All right. So but, but but see the thing is is the reason why it's hard for us to see that is because we've been taught yes. that the Bible is a book of chronological history. Yes, yes, yes. And it's not a it's not a history book. So it 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 it, 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 it might make you sound like where we get this foolishness from? Mm -hmm. Or can I say the Old Testament was written before? I mean, the New Testament was written before Old Testament when we don't know for ages and centuries. That this thing was with it. You know, you're not the first one I hear to that thing, you know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first one I hear to that thing. Because the first time I hear that thing, you know, I didn't just make it go cross. Okay. I make it go cross because I say, eh, all right, Judaism come before Christianity. I mean, Christianity come before Judaism. Oh, that's possible. But now, oh, you explain it about the episode. Yes. And because we know say, it's the same people them writing everything. Exactly. Yeah, it's the same people them writing well, everything. Well, if, if it's the Quran, yes. same people. Yes. Because it starts with Adam. Yes. See, Adam all is, of them, all of them Adam is the beginning of their story. Yes, all of the story of them in, in, in the three major exactly. religions. Exactly, yes. And the Western religion. Yes. Start with Adam. And we, what we're not, we have to grasp this, all right. The group of people, who we now call Jews. Mm -hmm. It's really the, the residues of the Exodus who invaded Egypt. Yes. They invaded Egypt from Russia. Yes. They come out of these mountains, Caucasus Mountain. Yep. And they invaded Egypt. And when they invaded Egypt, 
they start to move, they, 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 they dismantle Egypt actually. Yes, they did. They actually almost like they colonized. Exactly. That's where your first, that's where your European pharaohs, yes. Ptolemies, yes. The come European from. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. So now the Europe and then now Julius Caesar and all these guys start to infiltrate it because of these. There you go. Cleopatra who was part yep. of the whole thing and the son of Julius Caesar and Cleopatra right. became pharaohs of Egypt. Yep. So you have white people now. You got it. Governing. There you go. Egypt. All right. So when these people come out of Egypt now and spread them wings now into their original land, uh -huh. Russia, Germany, and all these places with them, Denmark, all these places yeah. they come from now. And next group of people named the British mm -hmm. realize that uh, these people need somewhere right. to, to, to live. Right. So them go to bam and the forties, them take this piece of land and say, all right, we're come and occupy this piece of land. Which is Canaan. Yeah, which is the land of your four parents. Uh -huh. Alluding to now the right. stories that was written. Right, exactly. In those days. <laughs> exactly. To validate now them occupying this piece of land. Exactly. So when you read it now, you have a sympathy for these people. You got it, man. Say, but wait, them take all the people them land, they need to get back them land because the Lord gave them this land through with milk and oil. Ain't that something? Which is them, they done right that already. Right. In the story. So you know, looking for the episodes. You got it. You, you, know, yeah, that deep, that you got deep, it, brother. That's deep, that's deep, that's deep, that's deep. That's deep. Yeah. That's and, and see, and, and once you know this, yeah. once you come to grips with this, it all comes like you saying. It all it all comes clear. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you do with that? Yes. What do you do with the fact that when you what do you do with the reality that what you thought was history is his story is truly his story? Yes. yes. Which is what the word history means. Mm -hmm. Well, what to do with it? Tell me. That's when you. That's when you delete it. That's when you realize you say, okay. This this is not consistent. This is something wrong with this. Okay, and once you see it's 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 the acid test here is how many inconsistencies do you have to find in something before you discard it as yes. fallible? Yes, yes. You see, for me it only takes one. Once I see one inconsistency, then I know that it's not infallible. Yes. You see? Of course. And we were taught that the Bible is infallible. Yes. We were taught that it's authentic, that it's inerrant. The word Me. of God. Yes. yes. See? And, 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 and in order for us as a people, brother, to begin to return to being in the position to get up and accomplish what we will. Yes. Before we can even begin to get there, we have to dispel the myth mm. in our minds. Because mm. the myth is what's keeping us down. You know, um, they say that the New Testament was first written in Greek. Koine oh, Greek, that's correct. Okay, all right. And they say that the Old Testament was first written in Amharic. Amharic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Amharic. Amharic. Yeah. Amharic. Amharic. Mm -hmm. um, Explain to us. Uh, now again, that's what they tell us. Yeah, yeah. So what we, in the Old Testament was written in what? They say it was written in Aramaic. Where did these people develop this life? That's, see, that's what I'm saying, brother. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. See, this is all created to give legitimacy. Yes. To their so-called authenticity, yeah, like got some, yeah, exactly. My, my, my name got some. You got it, brother. Yeah, got see, it. see. So, so, and, and and then if you do the research on the Roman Piso family, okay, we will do that research too. I will find it was one family. I write the whole thing. Yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, see, see, and the Roman Piso family was simply writing a stage play. I asked um, a very eloquent. Um, Preacher and journalist by the name of um, Mr. Ian Boyne. Uh -huh. He wanted to come on the program. Okay. So, I don't know if he's shy because he lives in Monday. He lives in Monday. But I asked him if I heard about that family. The Piso family? And he said, No, I never heard about wow. that. Wow. You know that that family wrote everything that you know. Exactly. Different. They give, all of them is given him. But some people say it is not a valid historical fact. That this family, and I know a lot of people here we talk about them already, but some people are saying that the piece of family is not a valid family in relationship to the authorship of the, 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 the New Testament. Well, they would have to say that. 
They have to say that. Because see, what's happening is, is scholarship now mm. is throwing too many monkey wrenches in the, in the re program of religion. Mm. People are beginning to understand that the literature of the so-called canonized 66 books of the Bible it has many inconsistencies, many contradictions now. Mm -hmm. uh, even many of our people are beginning to realize that. Mm -hmm. You see, because we have young people who are going to college now, going to school, okay? And they're, they're becoming thinkers. Yes. You follow me? And they're just not accepting the stuff that our grandparents and stuff put up with. Yes. You know? So when, a, when, when something has to stay in place, you got to have an explanation for the madness. And that is, you know, now I... Whether the Piso family wrote it or not, I mean, you know, I don't know them. I never met them, okay? Uh, but the research shows that they did. The research showed that the uh, Riso, uh, the Piso family wrote the entire New Testament. Yeah, yeah. You see? Uh, but again, if the Piso family wrote the New Testament, yeah. then that means that not one person in the New Testament is real. Is real. Well, we want people to know that the Piso family is a... Uh, Roman family. Roman aristocracy. Uh, stop, yeah. Yes. They, they alone could actually write. Yes, brother. Because the, 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 the layman on the ground could not write or uh, even right. intellectualize what we know read. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So they have somebody of high yes. education in yes. these days yes. that could have written the, the literature that we know. Exactly. No, call the Bible. Yes. So they give it over to this group of people named the Peace of. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is not real people. Cause we were brought up to believe that Matthew was the person who was following Christ, one of the disciples. Of course we would trust that. It's weird down at the bottom of my life, I come realize it, but no, not no so. It's not the same person. And all of these people, we don't even know no historical, there's no historical reference. Not one. To, there's no biography of not, Matthew. Not one. There's no biography of Luke. Not one. You know, we, 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 we don't hear that these people is the people them who record the greatest story on earth. Not one. Man, I had a debate, uh, and I don't like to use the word debate, but a discussion uh, with some seminarians at, uh, at Dallas Theological Seminary. And I challenged these seminarians to locate the burial site yeah. of anybody mentioned in the Bible. Yeah. Anybody mentioned. Where yeah. are they buried at? Really? I, now I can take in, I can take you right now and show you the burial sites of Ursa Maat Rasa Tepenrod Amesu Mariana, Imhotep, Zosia, Nedeket. You follow what I'm saying? Uh, um, um, uh, Pharaoh uh, Akhenaten. I can show you these burial sites of these great African pharaohs who lived 15, 20, 25,000 years ago. I can show you their burial site. Well, we went into Mount Zion um, and they showed us a place where they said this was the way where David was buried. And we went into the, the sepulchre, the way the sepulchre, so, the, yeah. the church of the, um, what they call it, holy sepulchre or something. And they showed this big stone. Uh huh. And white people from all over the world bring pictures of some crypt. Uh huh. And right. And put it on the stone. Right. Heel. And then they showed this place that this is where Christ was buried. Now let me, let me, let me add to that because I've been there in my research. They never say this is where. Mm. What they say is, it is believed yeah, that this is where yeah, Christ be. walked or was buried. Yeah. They can't say it's where it was, and they know they can't. But they put up signs, you know, like David, like, me and my brethren push my head through it and say, right, it, you know, so there are Mount Zion are going at David, which puts the Paul Zion. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 I mean, for example, I, you know, I challenge everybody, show, show me one stone from Solomon's temple. Mm. Come on, man. One pebble, give me a pebble of, 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 of so we're talking Solomon's temple here. Yeah. We're talking, we're talking the very edifice that the entire Masonic order, mm. okay, <laughs> states its claim on, brother. Yeah, and this was like, what, well, this was supposed to be 3,000 years ago. Right. We have temples 10,000 years ago. Yeah. We're still standing. Right. Yeah. Come on, man. So, so my thing is, if you don't have any evidence, yeah. you have no argument. This is the cutting edge and I refer to Oh, I just make you hear this and this is coming from a Christian. Okay. Uh, All right.
Uh, we can stop it and start it, but again, uh, we'll play this continuously. Hi, folks. Welcome to another edition of Questions Protestants Can't Answer. Today's question is, who wrote the Gospel of Mark? And how do you know? I'm John Martinoni, president and founder of the Bible Christian Society. And today's question is focused on the idea of sola scriptura, which is Latin for the Bible alone, or the Bible only, which is one of the fundamental pillars of most of Protestantism, that we can know all we need to know about our Christian faith and about Christian morals by simply picking up the Bible and reading. So this question, who wrote the book of Mark, is a very important question because what it does is if all I need to know about Christianity I get from the Bible, if the Bible is my sole authority in matters of faith and morals, which it is for most Protestants, how can they answer that question? Because nowhere in the Bible does it tell us who wrote the book of Mark. This thing right here at the beginning of the Gospel of Mark in Scripture that says the Gospel according to Mark, that's not inspired Scripture. That's put in there by the publisher of the Bible. We don't have any originals from Mark that say, I, Mark, wrote this Gospel, or that say the Gospel according to Mark. So again, if you go by the Bible alone, how do you know that Mark wrote Mark? Is somebody named Mark even wrote Mark? And how do you know that that Mark was inspired? Where in the Bible does it tell you who wrote the Gospel of Mark so that you may trust that it is inspired scripture? Because if you don't know who wrote it, how can you know it's inspired scripture? This is very, very important. So as Catholics, we need to ask everyone who believes in the Bible alone as their sole rule of faith, who wrote Mark? And if they say Mark, the, the secretary of Peter and, and companion of Paul, the next question is, how do you know? Because I read Mark and there's nothing here that says, I, Mark, companion of Peter and Paul, wrote this gospel. Nothing in Luke that tells me, nothing in Paul's letters that tells me who wrote the gospel of Mark. So what authority are you relying on? It's not the scriptures to know who wrote Mark. So again, the question is, who wrote the gospel of Mark? And how do you know? Think about it. Pray about it. I reappear. Thought-provoking. Always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Time is eight minutes past the hour, 12 o'clock. Brothers and sisters, this is John. Join us with respect for our national anthem. Let us stand and defend this one. Peace and love. Thank you. Eternal Okay. Oh, 
always smoking. Lyrics like a bazooka. You are listening to Muta Baruka. Yeah, we just want to remind the people them that this is just a a pre thing to what we happen at the um the Royal Bay you now Festival, Marcus Garvey Festival. We want you to know that this is happening Saturday and Sunday. You know, we will be broadcasting live on the Running African from 6 a.m. in the morning. And you know, we go on till, I don't know, maybe it's about 12 o'clock and then we have other things happening after 12 up to 6 o'clock in the evening. You know, it's, it's, it's big things and we know that right now people have made preparations already to come down. I don't know the hotel situation still you now because, trust me, the hotel them kind of book solid. <laughs> it's like some face. <laughs> it's like some face. I go ahead, you understand? And it's all about Marcus Garvey. It's all about Marcus Garvey who said, yeah, if you have no confidence in yourself, you are twice defeated in the race of life. But with confidence, you have won even before you have started. Mm. This is a serious thing. So we're talking to uh, the doctor here, Brother Ray, as we shall affectionately call him from now, Brother Ray. <laughs> That's right, Brother. Brother Ray is, 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 is shedding some light on certain things that I have heard before, but never really sci-fi it out in terms of putting it together in certain perspective. All right, so before we go to the break, we're talking about this family, this Roman family who we, well, I get to understand that they were the ones who was responsible to write all of this, you know, the, 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 the story, much Mark, Luke, and John, and these things, but mm -hmm. it's some deep story, you know, knowing that the Romans got them things from the Greeks, the Greeks got them things from the Egyptians, yes, it was not very difficult for the Romans to put together exactly. a story like this. Exactly. By, usurping and drawing from mm -hmm. the different traditions of, of, of Kemet and the different mythologies. That's what writers do. That exist in, 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 in Egypt. Yeah. You know? And I, I would just mention about Batman, how the writer of Batman placed Batman in a geographical location that is familiar mm -hmm. to people. Right. So it is almost like you are now living in the space where this person is. That, that's what makes it real. Yes, yes, yes. See, and that's what they did in their story writing. They used the names of real places. Yes. To and, and, and real names for people. Yes, yes. You know, to give it legitimacy yes. to, their, to, their, to their creation. And, we, and, and, and the thing is, it was taught to us, uh, Muta, it was taught to us, man, listen, this stuff was taught to me, man, out of my mother's womb. Yes. And, and my parents taught it to me. Yes. Okay, so I trust my parents. Of course. You know, I mean, like, I'm not going to challenge what they're teaching me, man. You know, and, and, it, and what's really deep about it is when I listen to my father, you know, preach this story mm. about Moses, about Jonah and the belly, about, yeah. uh, you know, and, 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 and give it such emotion and such veracity and, and ah, you know, and, and as a child, I'm watching this man, and and I'm listening to people. I'm watching people get happy over it, and and emotionalized, and and all this power is being manifested. That means all this stuff is real. Yes. yes. So I grow up not ever questioning it, never most challenging. Of, most, it. most of it don't do it, most right? It, because whenever you start to do that, you're coming out with something different, and then you are. Isolated, yes, from yes, girls and from your friends. Uh, right? Yes, I know the feeling. I get mad. <laughs> I know the feeling. You know, I get mad really and truly. Well, it's only about mad people about the place because there's a lot of people coming to this awakening. Yes, and realizing that something went wrong, mm -hmm. and we need to figure it out. Mm -hmm. Only about one is to figure it out. You know, because we see say Roman Catholicism is on the decrease. Yes, a lot of people is moving out of that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm looking at churches, man. In fact, I did a lecture called "The Demise of Christianity." Yeah. I'm sorry, yeah, the demise of the, the demise. Yeah, that's what it's called, the demise of Christianity, and and it's because people are realizing that these are stories. 
Mm. You follow me? Uh, and what, like I said, man, once once your eyes come open. <laughs> Yes, it's a different thing. Right? Yes, sir, brother. Yeah. One, one person said it. One person said this way, man. Once, I fact, as Dr. Zazar said it in uh, Blacked Out Through Whitewash. She said it this way. Once the chick leaves the shell of its ignorance, mm. it can never go, go back. back. Yes, it's a real thing. Can't go back in, man. Yeah. You know, and they're, they're even in the Matrix. Remember that scene where the guy wanted to get put back into the Matrix? Yes, it did. You know, yeah. it don't work like yeah, that, man. Yeah. Can't go back at that. Can't go back, brother. Yeah. All right. The the idea of kinetic um, understanding and the Christian understanding. We see it clash in all they they, they draw from. The, the chemistic understanding of these mythologies and place it into a position now where what they tell us is the real stuff and what we know about chemist is devil thing. So we get things like the ankh and most Christians don't want you to wear an ankh because they say it's a devil thing that. You know, in Jamaica they do that. Really? Yeah, in Jamaica, I used to sell ankh. I used to have a store and I sell ankh. And a, a sister came in there and buy an ankh and said she got to she, she go to her workplace with it. And the, the, the boss tell her, say, she can't wear it in her place because that devil symbol. Wow. You never know what this ankh is all about. And if you look on, every time you hear some of these evangelists speak against, for instance, the rappers or anything, they speak of them based upon the symbols that they use. Mm -hmm. And the symbols that they use is ancient African symbols. Yes, yes. You know, yes. and... Whenever you start to delve deep into African symbols, Christianity demonizes yes. African symbols. So mm -hmm. the things like the Ankh and what do call even the David star, which is not the yeah, David right, star. Right, right, right. Morgan David? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like you shouldn't you shouldn't have that. You shouldn't have that around you. Oh, you deal with that in a your um I explain it to the people. Yeah. I explain it, and I, I, I do. I, you know, for example, on our uh, on the pulpit at the African Village, that's what's on the front, an on. Mm. Okay, and you know, people ask, and what's amazing to me, man, is is how when I run across Europeans. They say, "Oh, that's a beautiful unk you have on." Yeah, definitely. Yes, you know. Mm. And and I'll ask the Europeans, I say, so you know what this means? And they say, yes, it's an African, it's the African key of life. Mm. White folks say that to me. Yeah, black people. My people it right. <laughs> you know, my people say, why you why you got that that that, that symbol of Satan on? Mm. So I explain to our people, you know, and, and of course for those who are listening who don't know, the Ankh is it's not a cross, it's not a it's not an African cross. It is the symbol that represents the family unit. Mm. The top of the Ankh is oval shaped, which represents the womb yeah. of the woman. The wings on the Ankh represents the ovaries from which the eggs come. The bottom of the ankh represents the phallus of the male. When all that comes together, man, you have life. Complete, yeah. You see? And as long as it comes together, now this, oh man, you just give me a go in another direction now. As, as long as that comes together, you will have eternal life. Yes. You see? Yes. So, this is one of the reasons for the strategy, the subliminal devices now of homosexuality. Yes. You see what I'm saying? To prevent life. Yes. It's, a, it's the most subtle form of genocide yes. that I've ever seen. So I try to get our people to understand the importance of wearing an ark. Why wear a cross? I mean, let's look at this. Why wear a cross when the cross is nothing more than the old-fashioned electric chair? Yes. Symbolized. Dead. It is what the, it is what the Roman government killed people on. Yeah. Okay, you wouldn't wear an electric chair around your neck. Yeah. So why wear a cross around your neck? And we and we and we somehow or another again the programming. We think that the cross has something to do with Jesus. Yeah. Jesus wasn't the only person killed on the cross, man. It was just a normal way to kill people at the Roman. That was that was the vehicle of death for everybody at that time. Yeah, like hanging, like legend. Yeah. Exactly. So for the Christians who are listening to me, I'm getting ready to tell y'all something that'll make you a very rich person if you listen now. Okay? If you want to wear something around your neck, you don't want to wear an arc around your neck, then patent 
an empty tomb. Mm. Okay? Since you say that Jesus got up out the grave, instead of wearing a cross, you should be wearing an open tomb around your neck. Where's our eight shot? Yeah. Mm. That's zero steel. Yeah, man. Somebody patent that. They'll get rich. <laughs> 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 All right, you know, in you know, the Bible, them say when Christ raised from the dead, you have to bully for other people that raised from the dead, too. I don't remember it's which one of the book them. Again, again, we we'll go to Matra, uh, maybe it was Mark, uh -huh. who have these really strange stories that bully for dead people get up at the same time Christ the, the raised from the dead. And not only that, no, but there's a man in the book named Lazarus. Yes. Lazarus was almost smelling mm -hmm. for long in the dead. Mm -hmm. And Jesus took him out of the tomb and bring him back to life. Mm -hmm. My question is, did he die again? Or is he still living? Because what would be the purpose of raising a man for that? To show up so he can raise the dead? Or what would be the purpose of raising him from the dead? For him to die again? Because I desire for man to die once after that is the judgment. And right. Obviously, in part the judgment where Jesus himself raised him out of the coffin to make him live again. Mm -hmm. So, what, what do you think about that? <laughs> well, if it had actually happened, see, again, we got to remember this never historically happened. Yeah. So, we're, we're trying to answer questions that of something never happened. That's right. It's, <laughs> it's, <laughs> give, give what them say. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Uh, so, of course, uh, he's not still walking around on the planet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that means that he died again. He had to have died again. But yet, in theology, you're taught that once you're resurrected, you can't yeah, die again. Yeah, that's what I, that, that is my point. Right. Now, and, and I believe it was in the movie The Last Temptation of Christ. Yeah. I believe it was in that movie. It showed that somebody walked up and stabbed him. Okay. You know, I, they, they had to find they, they had to find a way to get him back in, to get him back in the ground. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's interesting that you pull up this scripture because this is one of the passages that I tried to